We were also killed on 9-11. Avenge us. We have to illuminate the nature of the structure of power which oppresses us. It is not only in the specific and documented and orchestrated events such as those of 9-11, which is but after all a little continuation of the series of predations that have been visited upon the mass of our people for over 150 years at least. Every major adventure of the U.S. rulers has proceeded on the basis of such false flag operations and such pretexts. Whenever I'm asked, which is very often, do you think the U.S. government would be so crass and so cruel to uh, carry off an attack against its own people that wound up in, resulting in the massacre of th 3,000 people? I tell them this. Well, they told hundreds of thousands of people who live and work in lower Manhattan, the air was safe to breathe. When to, to this day, it was not. To this day, there's contamination down there. They already tested it. They knew. They knew. They knew. These men risked their lives on 9 11, saving people that they didn't even know. They didn't know these people. It could have been any one of us in the Twin Towers, in the rubble, and these guys would have still got us out. Right? These guys. I myself ran from Building 7 as it fell. And I heard with my own ears what sounded like a rapid succession of, of explosions while running. We can rebuild plane crashes completely with debris recovered by divers from the ocean, but we cannot even produce a single piece of steel from the World Trade Center, steel that hasn't already been melted down and fabricated into something else, to examine it because the stuff was shipped out of the public eye so quickly. There's one guy that came in front of the whole, the whole task force the whole unit. And he says, hey, you need to have a respirator like this. And, and, and it, make sure you have the blue canister. But unfortunately, there's no blue canisters. A, a, a gentleman approached me who was an NBC warfare tech. He said, who, this, this, kind of, this person is specialized in poisoning the enemy and preventing us from being poisoned. We're watching on the, on the TV and there was a radio saying the air quality was fine. He approached me on a low and said, hey, the air quality is 40 times acceptable levels. On September 11th, 2001, along with hundreds of my fellow troops, I went to Ground Zero. No one asked us. No orders were given. We went because our city, our country, our neighbors were under attack. And we knew what to do. Or at least we thought we did. I came home 10 days later. I won't tell you about the vivid images of Ground Zero. There's no need to. I want to tell you tonight about the people we call heroes, about the people in front of you, about the people you've read about in the newspaper for the past week who were invisible for the past five years, that they were abandoned in their hour of greatest need and are still in growing numbers living in terrible physical and economic circumstances as they struggle with the carcinogenic effects of the toxic chemical soup ground zero became that they still have the dignity and courage and even now fight like hell to save innocent lives even as so many of us are dying can this side of the room everybody stand up Everybody on this side, if you're all rescue workers, will be dead in four years. Thank you. You'd all be dead in four years. That's our statistics. That's what's happening. In seven years, it doubles. This is what <coughs> Mount Sinai proved in a 17,000-page study that's on the Internet. You can read about it. I want to tell you about how sick so many of these brave men and women have become. How Dr. Thomas Frieden, the Commissioner of Health for New York, has done all he could for the past five years to further denigrate the sacrifice of our soldiers, firemen, 
police, EMTs, steel workers, all the first responders by diminishing the clinical findings of his own coroner's office over and again, his own study, and the undeniable epidemiology of those who came to this city's rescue on that eternal day. I want to tell you about how the mayor refused to accept the fact that not dozens, not hundreds, but many thousands of us were contaminated, sickened, and poisoned by the most toxic combinations of building materials in the history of disaster relief. And that for five terrible years, he ignored that fact. That's not how you treat people the city considered heroes. Every time Time Magazine dismisses that evidence and instead writes a two-page article about the psychology of the conspiracy movement. They perpetuate this buildup of people in very, very coordinated efforts trying to take this movement apart. We who are still dying from 9-11, who went into the towers and into that pile, now live with those buildings in our lungs and digestive systems and our blood. And if you allow these scumbags to strip you in this movement of our legitimacy, you condemn first responders to death. Everyone in this administration had motive, intent, and opportunity. Conspiracies are only evidence the courts won't hear. We came to your rescue on 9-11. Now thousands of us in our families need you to come for two hours. For myself and far too many of us, research and the effective treatment is going to arrive far too late. I have double metastasizations in both lungs. Where the canaries in the coal mine? Where did all that dust go? We were also killed on 9-11. Avenge us.